So I think it's time now to add some materials and start working with making the place beautiful. So what I want to do is actually I need to give you an example of how this works on a more simplified object. So let's add a cube, let's go into local view, and then we can go into material preview and see how that works. Now, under the shade editor, which is here, shade editor, we have it set to world because we're editing the world, but we actually want to edit the object itself. I want to make a new material, let's call this plaster, because I think that the archways should be like a plaster material, so that's what I want to create. But where do you start? So generally, most objects, especially in photorealistic scenes, they'll be using something called PBR materials, which are something which you can download. So there's lots of websites online, websites like CCO Textures, which come with very high quality materials. Also iMesh ourselves, we also do have some materials here as well, and they are already set up for you inside of Blender. So you just need to download the one you want, and then you can add them to your scene very quickly. But most materials come with something like this. So you might look online for a plaster material, and it looks something like this, and you think this is good but it's missing a lot of information. So that's where extra texture maps, so a map is a term used in 3D world, extra maps which can help you tell Blender know exactly where the data should go. So you can see this is the final result, which has a lot more detail than just this diffuse map. So this diffuse map tells it where the color should go, the displacement and normal maps tell it where it should be bumpy, and the roughness maps tell it where it should be rough and where it should be glossy. So these in combination with each other can make a very high quality material. So we can plug these all into Blender and Blender knows how to deal with them. So if we go back to Blender and we can drag them all in. So let's grab, let's grab the diffuse map. The diffuse map which is the color will go into the base color slot. Sometimes it's called base, base color, sometimes it's called diffuse, some kind, sometimes it's called albedo, but generally the colorful one will go into color. Next, we get the roughness map. Let's get this over here. Now roughness map isn't a color map. It's a very special map that tells it where roughness should be. So let's set this to non-color, and then we can plug that into roughness. And that basically gives it information as to where it's glossy and where it's not. So we can see some bits, if I unplug this, let's set this to black we can see that it's got some extra detail. Whereas if I was to try to do this myself, I can only do one whole value over the whole object. Whereas this allows me to input where the information is going to go exactly. So let's plug this one back in. And the last one, which I'm going to do is open GL, uh, the, the normal map GL, which refers to the direction the normal map is facing. DX, if that is available, is for other software. So if there's GL, use this one, but often it just comes with one, uh, so just use the one that's available. Displacement map we won't use right now, uh, but that basically actually changes the geometry of the object itself, whereas this one is just gonna be gonna be faking what it looks like in real life. So I'm gonna change that also to non-color, because it, even though it is colorful, it's a very special map. So, that, so we always set it to non-color, plug that into a map, normal map, plug that in here and plug that into here. And now we're going to see it's got some bumpiness to it. We can also go to render view. We can see that it has some bump. If I was to unplug these two, we can see what this one's doing. So it looks like it's a really bumpy texture. Uh, but let's say we want to change how how big this texture is, because it looks quite small and we can already start to see some, some details like we're zooming into an image. So we can change that. So we can add another node such as a, a texture coordinate. Then, and then we can search for a mapping node. And we're gonna plug that from UV because this is gonna be not using a generated map, but a UV map, which is part of the object, which we'll go over in a second. Also, I'm really sorry if you hear cat meowing in the background. So basically we, we rescued this cat um, a few weeks ago and I think he's having a hard time settling in. So he's gonna be meowing. He meows quite a lot to let us know when he's around. Uh, so just please ignore the meowing if you can hear it in the background. Right, so I'm gonna plug this mapping node into the texture node like this and plug this one into here. And now that allows us to change some of the date details about this object as well. So we can rotate it, we can scale it and all sorts. So let's click and drag these and multiply it by let's say five. And we can see that this looks a lot better. It's kind of fitting this object size a little bit better. And we can zoom in and see more details like this. Now this normal map, is, is kind of faking the detail. So if we go to the side, we can see there's not actually any detail. It's com still completely flat, but Blender is pretending that this actually has detail. So it looks like from this distance, there is actually some bumpiness, but when you go down, you can actually see there isn't. And that's where a displacement map would be more useful, but we're not gonna cover that in this tutorial. I think it's irrelevant for this particular project, but it can add a lot more geometry to your scene, which might complicate this at this point. So the normal map for this will be generally very fine, and this already looks amazing. So let's just plug that into here. 
and plug that into here. So now, how does the text, how does the image know where to go? So if I go into object mode and select all the vertices with A, I can then open up a new window, let's just add this one, and then I'm gonna click on UV editor. Because if you remember over here, this was called a UV, this is called the UV output, and there's also a UV editor. And if we go to the object properties, object data, we can also go, we can also see that there's UV maps here available. So this is basically referring to this. I don't know if you did this in school, but for me, uh, I was told to take a piece of paper and turn it into a cube. And there was kind of like a layout like this that we created to create a cube. So we, we cut this out of a piece of paper, we cut the, we folded it at these lines and it created the cube. And this is called its UV map. Objects can have multiple UV maps, but generally we'll just stick to one for now. Now let's imagine that you have a cube in real life and you have a piece of paper and you want to wrap around, let's just make that a bit brighter down here, and you want to wrap around a piece of paper around a cube, you're going to need to cut that piece of paper in certain places so that it can actually wrap around. And that's exactly the same case here. So we can see at this edge, the texture doesn't actually continue around the corner because it's, there's a break. So this part is this part and here. But whereas over here, we can see that this face and this face are connected. So if we find these points, we can see that they do actually go over the corner like uh, let's find a bump like this one here. We can actually see that they are connected. It's a little bit hard to see on a sharp cube. If I was to add some geometry like this, we can actually see that the texture does actually go around the corner, whereas this one does not. There's gonna be, there's gonna be a break just here. So there's a seam going all the way along. So when we, when we have an object, we need to unwrap it so that it know, so Blender knows how to place the texture. So let's say we end up with a plane and we then extrude it out we have some errors because Blender hasn't created the shape, we have created the shape. Whereas when you do Shift A and add your own shape, Blender is already gonna add, Blender's already gonna add the UV map for you, uh, but for shapes that you've created yourself, you're gonna need to unwrap yourself. So we need to tell Blender where to do the cuts. So to unwrap a cube, there are several different ways, but let's just do this way quickly. So we can select all of these edges with pressing number two of edge select. Let's go round this shape like this. And then we can just do right click, mark seam, press A to select everything, press U to unwrap, and then we can press unwrap. So now we've unwrapped the object. So we can see that this face and this face are connected, but where we have the red line, that's going to be a cut. So if I was to go here, we can see there's going to be a seam here, whereas over here, the texture is going to go straight around. So if I just bevel everything again so we can see it, we can see there's not going to be any seam here but here there is gonna be a seam. Now these seams are gonna be inevitable. No matter what object you create, there's always gonna to need to be a seam. So it's ideal for when you create the object that the part in which is gonna be most visible is gonna have the least amount of seams. So that's what we've basically done here. Thus a quick overview of unwrapping. Unwrapping, honestly, do not worry if you do not get it the first time, the sixth time, the 20th time. Unwrapping is a big pain for a lot of people. There are speed methods, so you can go in here, select everything with A, press U and do smart UV unwrap. And for a lot of textures, generally it's gonna be fine. Like there will be an obvious seam, but if you're far away enough, you're not you're never gonna see the seam and it will do it will do an okay job. But what it's basically doing is that it's basically creating a seam automatically for you based on uh, an angle limit. So anything past a 66 degrees, um, it will consider a seam and make that a new a new island. So these are these are no longer connected. Nothing here is going to be connected together. This might look like it's connected, but it's actually a separate island. So I can separate it and then not connect it actually. So that's a speed method, but generally unwrapping is is kind of a lesson on its own. Hopefully this is just going to give you a brief overview of how this works and how textures work. So uh, let's move ahead and show you how to do it with our scene itself. So let's delete this. Let's go back and let's select this object and then we want to unwrap it. Okay, so let's unwrap this shape. So if I go into if I go into edit mode and press A and press U to unwrap, we can see that it kind of wrap, unwraps fine. So it looks like it's unwrapped that face with no problems. That's just because there's only one face. Because if you remember, we have these modifiers here and they are basically generating the geometry for us in a procedural way. So when we go into edit mode, that's the only geometry we can add. But if I was to add that material to it, such as the plaster, go here, we can, we can see this face has unwrapped, but these edges have some have some really horrible artifacts because Blender cannot unwrap something with, for example, the solidify modifier. We have to do that ourselves. So at this stage, we're just gonna apply the mirror and we're gonna apply the solidify and then we can begin to unwrap nicely here. 
Sorry, I'd already created some seams, I'll just delete those. So let's unwrap this object. So I want to unwrap this in, a, in the best way possible in which will create the least amount of artifacts or bending with the texture and also in a way which hides the seams from the camera. And if I go into camera view, we can see we don't really see most of these edges. So these edges we don't see, I'm going to mark them as a seam. So I'm going to hold down Alt, Shift and click, click around this object until I've selected all of this. I know that these are not going to be visible to the camera. And then I do know, I do know that these bits will be visible. So let's follow this edge around like this. Go around this object and go around like that. And there we go. So now we've created a continuous loop which goes around, around like this. Now if I do right click, mark seam, I can select all and press U and then unwrap. So now it's try to roughly unwrap. I think it will actually be better. There's two different unwrap methods, conformal or angle based. With, con with conformal sometimes works with certain objects and angle based works with others. And we can see if we set it to conformal, there's a lot more deformation and it kind of looks very strange here, whereas angle based works quite well. So we can see that the now the texture goes very nicely onto this object and it's unwrapped quite nicely. Now really don't do not worry if you do not get this uh, just try to unwrap it just how I've done it and that should be good enough for what we're going to work with today so let's just go into here we can see that it's unwrapped the edges look really nice and that works pretty good so right then so what we're going to do now let's just have a look around this object to make sure it's okay and let's create this material itself so in my original example let's go back here it was like a nice pink material so I'm going to plug back in the roughness and the and the thing that gives it actually let's go back here the thing that gives it the most color is always going to be the base color so I can choose a color here make it brighter I can also make it pink and I can change it to blue and stuff like this we do have a diffuse a diffuse or a base color material but I do not really want this you can just unplug this because I think that there's already going to be enough information in the roughness and the normal map that it does it will look like it's just been painted in a solid color but it does have roughness underneath but you can mix these in together if you wanted to with certain nodes such as a color mix color and now you can do some fun things so I can pl plug this one into here and I can click and drag this color into here and then plug that one in and now I get the mix method is just going to be mixed so I can turn this to 0% and it's going to be 100% this one I can turn it to this one it's going to be 100% this one if I do a mix like this it's going to be a slight mix of the two so if I go to let's go material view it's probably going to be quicker we can see we start to see it's going to be a mix of the two so it's going to, it's going to slightly color this one I can also change to another method such as color which is going to be colorizing this one which might be quite cool for this one but I do think maybe it's too dark and in general I don't think I'm going to need this at all so let's just delete that and go ahead with that right then so now I want to start doing that with other objects so let's unwrap this one and this is probably going to be at the point at which it's probably going to be nice to save the scene so let's go to file save as and I'm just going to save that as a new version here and save that in. Let's just go back to here. And another thing which you can do when you're saving. So let's say you've saved the scene, but you want to edit a really complicated object. Generally, what I do is I just shift D to duplicate that object. And now I want to move it to its own location, which is hidden from the always going to be hidden, but kind of put into its own folder. So if I need to come back to it, I can. So I'm going to press M to move it to a new collection. I'm going to name that collection old. So this could be like my old set of objects if I really need to. And then that's going to be in there. And then I can just turn this off like this. So now if I if I edit this one or delete it by accident, for example, I can always bring it back because I have a, a reserved copy there, which is always good to do inside 3D because you won't know when you're going to make a mistake later, later on down the line, especially when you're going to apply a lot of modifiers. So I always just make a copy. So let's just apply the mirror, the mirror, and the mirror. And we can see we still have a 2D object. And then I'm going to apply the solidify. So we have that. And then we can unwrap this shape as well. So let's do that. So let's um, figure out what we're going to see, what we're not going to see. So we're not going to see this top edge. Okay, let's go into local view. And let's just go around this, this edge. And we can't see this back edge as well. And let's just go around like this. Right then, we're also not going to see the back edge of this, so let's do that. Circles can be notoriously hard to unwrap, but I think this should be not too thick that it should be able to make it work. So that's going to work. Mark seam, A, U, unwrap. 
There we go, I think that's done a pretty good job. Let's now give it the plaster material and then let's do render preview and see how it looks. Right, then let's go into the front camera view and see. Right, I think this should be pretty good. Okay, I think that should be enough for unwrapping here. I think we can fine tune the unwrapping a bit further so that the unwrapping sizes are generally the same, uh, but I'm not gonna go in, over this in the tutorial. So this should be fine for now. If I go into this view here, the render preview, we can start to see a very lovely scene. And maybe the roughness is gonna be, maybe this is gonna be, uh, the roughness is too much. I might actually increase this a little bit more, like eight. And we can also decrease the bumpiness here if we wanted to, so we can set this to 0.5 if it's too much. We can try to get an idea of how that's gonna look. Right then, I also wanna unwrap the staircase. So, so in this case, I'm just gonna unwrap around this base edge. I'm gonna select all these and then maybe just these inside faces because we're not going to see these when I add some grass on top. I'm going to do mark seam and then U and then unwrap. We can try to unwrap it but we're going to get some strange artifacts because this is meant to be square but it's actually bending it a little bit because it's trying to go around all the way around the edge. Now I can add more cuts but I think just for speed let's do U and smart UV unwrap and then that will look fine on the edges because the edges are so small I don't think we're going to see the, the seam anyway. We can see it here, but if we go to camera view, I think you'll have to zoom in quite far before you'll even see it. So I think this texture is random enough that we won't see the seam. So UV, smart UV unwrap for such a square object should work fine. Right then. But I don't want this to be pink. I want this to be white. So what I can do, we've already created this material and I really like it. So I want to keep it, but just make a second copy. And that's what this one does. So I can make this one a new material. So it's added a, added a 0 0.001. We can click this button to see a big list of all the materials. And we can see the original one. And we can now see the new one, plus 001. And I can just rename this one to be white. And then I can change this to be white. Something like this. Now one thing to note, you never want to have 100% white or 100% black. Because that doesn't exist in the real life. If you have 100% white, that's basically saying that it's going to be emitting its own light. If you have 100% black, it's going to be like a black hole, where whereas in real life, most black objects do give reflect some light, unless it's going to be like Vanta black, which is like what 99.99% uh, absorbs all light, and that does look pretty strange. That does look like a black hole sometimes, but that's you don't really get those objects in your own house. So a value something like this, or not too high, something like this shouldn't shouldn't be too much of a problem. So let's set something like this slightly grayer and then that's gonna be white so we can preview this and see how that looks we've got a nice bumpy material I think that should look good right now if we go back to this view and we can see how the scene is looking and that's looking pretty nice 